God is on the move and working and active, and, and we praise God that we have the privilege to be part of that um, and to witness that, and so um, many things to give thanks and praise for there. But um, that's all I have for announcements. Let's rise and greet those around you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Morning again, Jim. Doing very well yourself. Where, where's Nita today? Wasn't feeling well. Oh no. Okay. Okay, good. I'm glad you talked to her. Okay. Okay, good. Nothing serious. Just not feeling great. Okay, I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, good morning. How are y'all? Yeah, you're looking great too. Good to see you. Good morning. Where you see you today? At the Super Bowl? Okay. We're going to talk about the tapping the faith a little bit, but 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 we'll we I'll fill you in. But, so nothing too long. But.
We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we have the unique opportunity to go through the book of Esther, and a great and wonderful book. If you haven't read it, I would encourage you to do so. But uh, when we talk about, you know, opportunistic, you know, endeavors that where God puts us in a position to be able to live out and to fulfill in our lives, you know, Esther was put in an absolutely unique opportunity, and God put her there for that very purpose and unique purpose. When we think about that, we often think about the big things that happen in our lives, but but think about all the, the little opportunities that we come across day in and day out. The opportunities to reflect Jesus to someone, I, um, the opportunities to, to share his message with someone. You know, in our time of confession, we often use the, our, the words, right? We confess all our sins, um, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. But the, the opposite end of that is true too, right? Not Maybe sometimes I don't say the wrong things, but maybe sometimes I don't say anything at all, right? And, and the opportunity to um, bring someone closer to God or to say a kind word or to just simply live out a Christian life um, goes right past me, right? And, and I don't even see it sometimes, right? And, and that's why the confession continues. I, I confess all my sins to you. The things that I have done wrong and the things that I have left undone, right? That I didn't do at all. Um, the places that God has put us in, and that we have a chance to, to be Christ and just be Christian, and we just miss it. It goes right past us. We find that all the time in our lives, or I really sit and reflect on it. Uh, time and time again, I think of all the opportunities I've had to, to do the right thing or say the right thing and saying nothing. Maybe I didn't say the wrong thing, but I said nothing at all or did nothing at all, and how I miss those chances too. God is a God of grace and forgiveness, and that's why he invites all of us, because none of us in here is perfect in any way. That's why he invites all of us to come to him and say, Lord, forgive me where I have erred, um, either explicitly or implicitly by what I didn't do, um, and we receive his grace and mercy. So if you would join me as we go to our Lord and confess our sins to him. Heavenly Father, each and every one of us are here this morning to hear your words of grace, to receive your grace, of your mercy, your words of mercy. And Lord, we know that as we come here this morning, that you have given us chances, opportunities, put us in places to, to share your word or put us in places, Lord, to just share your loving spirit with the world around us. And we've missed it, didn't see it, weren't paying attention, or maybe even just didn't even want to. Lord, we need your forgiveness and your grace, and we need your Holy Spirit to guide and to lead us so that we may see the world as you do and, and share your message as you have called us. So, Lord, we pray that you would guide and lead us as we hear your words of grace to live out that grace in the lives around us. We pray this all in your Son's name. Amen. The very good news is that Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all your sins. As he called an ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What gift of grace is Jesus, my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus for my life. Holy bound to his. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing. All is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in. But 
that I am not forsaken for by my side the Savior he will stay I labor on in weakness and rejoicing for in my need his power is displayed to this I hold my shepherd will defend me through the deepest valley he will lead oh the night has been won and i shall overcome yet not i but through christ in fate I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus fled and suffered for my pardon. And he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold, my sin has been defeated. Jesus now and ever is my plea For oh, the chains are released I can sing I am free Yet not I but through Christ in me With every breath, I long to follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring me home. And day by day, I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne. To this I hold is only Jesus, all the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, not I, but through Christ in me. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. I'd like to invite all the children to come forward to hear a message. And parents, you're welcome to join your child if you'd like to. But come on up. We're going to wait just a little bit. A few more coming. Come on up. All right, good to see you all. Are y'all going to watch the Super Bowl? Maybe. You don't know? Depends on if it's on when you're home. You're, do you know who's playing? Yep, that's exactly right. The Bengals and the Rams. Are you rooting for someone in particular? You think you're rooting for the Bengals. That's a good choice, I think. If I had to choose one, I think that's where I'd go to. Right. Okay, very good, very good. And are you excited about the commercials? The halftime show. Okay, halftime show. It's a kick back to the 90s, I hear, so that'll be interesting. Um, well, today we're going to learn about Esther, right? Esther, a wonderful, wonderful, the book of Esther, a great story. I'd encourage you all to read it. Um, but one of the things about the book of Esther is in that book, it talks about how Esther was put in a unique place at a unique time for a very, very specific purpose, okay? So, you know, he was, she was there in that time, in that place, for a reason, for a purpose. A wonderful, wonderful blessing that God gave to her. She didn't see it or recognize it at that time. But let me ask you this. Do you think God still does that for us today? you think he puts us in the right place at the right time for the right reason, for the right purpose? Yeah, and I was trying to think about that, like some of the times, what are those times? Let me ask, when you're at school, have you ever noticed that one of your friends may be sad? 
You ever notice that when you're at school that maybe a friend of yours is sad? Yeah, and, and do you think to yourself, oh my goodness, one of my friends is sad. I hope someone talks to that friend um, because they're sad. I don't want them to be sad and then just go on with your day. What do you think? Or do you wonder, I wonder if God has put that on my heart to see that friend at this very time so I can go and talk to them and make them feel better. What do you think is the better way? The second way, right? Yeah, that we see them and we say, you know what? Not like, oh, not my problem. I hope someone helps them, but that's not my job, right? But instead we see someone and we say, no, maybe God has put me here because it is my job, right, to go and just say a kind word or just ask how they're doing or, or ask them why they're sad. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of situations like that, right? Maybe, maybe somebody's doing the wrong thing and we say, you know what, maybe I shouldn't say anything at all. It's not my place. But maybe if we always say it with what in our hearts? With God in our hearts and with love for our friend, right? So not, not because we want to show them that we're right and they're wrong, but we want to do what? We want to care for our friends. We want to share our love with our friends, the love that God has given to us. And, and so when we see the people around us, we may think we're disconnected from them. We have nothing to do with them. But the reality is, are we connected to them or disconnected to them? We're connected to everybody, right? That may seem kind of wild, but, but we're all connected to each other. Each and every one of us, we need each other. And, and, and the more that we share kind acts, the more we share God's good news with the people around us, then what do you think that will inspire them to do? Yeah, to share more as well, to do the same. So when we see the world around us, we should see ourselves as connected to all people. And that God has put us in the relationships that we have, right? Friends and families and even the relationships of just passing by someone in the store or something like that. He's put us in that situation at all things, right? So that we may share a little bit of his love with the world around us. Maybe that's as simple as when you walk past somebody giving them a smile and a hello, right? Um, or maybe helping someone when they're in bigger need than that. But we never just walk by somebody as if they don't exist at all, right? Because God hasn't put us there to do that. Does that make sense? All right, I appreciate it. Does that make sense? All right, y'all can go back to your seats now. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good morning. Today we start with the first reading of Esther uh, chapter 4. Verse 1 through 17. When Mordecai learned all that had been done, Mordecai tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went out into the midst of the city, and he cried out with a loud and bitter cry. He went up to the entrance of the king's gate, for no one was allowed to enter the king's gate clothed in sackcloth. And in every province, wherever the king's command and his decree reached, there was great mourning among the Jews, with the fasting and weeping and lamenting, and many of them lay in sackcloth and ashes. When Esther's young women and her eunuchs came and told her the queen was deeply distressed, she sent garments and clothe, Morde uh, clothe Mordecai so that he might take off his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Then Esther called for Hakath. Hak and one of the king's eunuchs, who had been appointed to attend her, and ordered him to go to Mordecai to learn what his, uh, what this was and why it was. Hacketh went out, out to Mordecai in the open square of the city, in front of the king's uh, gate, and Mordecai told him all that had happened to him, an exact sum of money that Haman had promised to pay in the in the king's treasuries. For the destruction of the Jews, Mordecai also gave him a copy of the written decree issued in Susa for their destruction, that he might show it to Esther and explain it to her, and command her to go to the king and beg his favor and plead with him on behalf of her people. And Hacketh went and told Esther what Mordecai had said. Then Esther spoke to Hacketh and 
commanded him to go to Mordecai and say, All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that if any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law to be put to death, except the one to whom the king holds out to the golden scepter so that he may live. But as for me, I have not been called to come to the it come into the king these thirty days. And they told Mordecai what Esther had said, and then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, Do not think to yourself in the king's palace you will escape any more than the, all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another palace, um, but the but and your father father's house will perish and who and who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such time as this then esther told him to reply to mordecai go gather all the jews to be found in susa and hold and hold a fast on my behalf and do not eat or drink for 30 days night or day i and my young women will also fast as you do then i will go to the king Though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. You may rise for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading today comes from Luke chapter 6, verse 17 through 26. And he came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear and be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured, and all the crowd sought to touch him for power, came out and from him and healed them all. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you are are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, you shall laugh. Blessed you are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you, and spurn your name as evil, on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For so their fathers did, did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you who all speak well of you, for so their fathers did the false prophets. You may now be seated. Well, I pray God's grace, peace, and mercy are yours from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So the book of Esther, wonderful, wonderful book. If you haven't uh, read it, I would strongly encourage you. I think it's just like 10 chapters, something along those lines. It's not too terribly long. It's a, a tradition in many Jewish homes once a year to read through that as a family. Um, I thought that would be a great exercise to do as well, to sit down as a family and read it. But the story really is uh, fantastic. Um, to kind of fill you in a little bit, it's, it's a, a book that takes place post-exile. So, so the Israelites of all the Babylonian captivity has taken um, all of them to exile or most of them to exile. Um, and some have returned now. The return didn't all happen at once. It kind of happened in ways. And, and some are kind of left back in, uh, in the Babylon area. Um, but now it's the Persians who are in rule. And that's where we find Esther. Um, the king, Xerxes, or he has another name that's kind of weird, but uh, um, is looking for a new queen. And as he's looking for a new queen, he calls for all the beautiful women of the, of the region, and they all come, and lo and behold, he chooses Esther because she's a beautiful, beautiful woman. Esther hides her name from uh, the king, in fact, changes her name from Haggadah to Esther, um, so they would not recognize her as a Jewish girl. Um, and so there she is. And in fact, the word Esther means hidden. Um, and, um, so some say it also means star, um, but it really, truly, it means hidden, which fits the whole story of Esther itself. 
because something that is maybe not as well known is the book of Esther comes with some controversy and some debate. Um, because did you know that the name of God is not mentioned one single time in the entire book? It just completely glosses over God's name. It doesn't even refer to God. Um, it doesn't say anything about God. Um, and uh, it doesn't mention his promise. It doesn't mention his covenant. It doesn't even mention uh, um, the Israelites as the people of God or anything like that. Somebody could read it and say, you know what? This isn't even a Christian text. And some have throughout history said that. But one of the things that they say about Esther is that God is on every page throughout the book of Esther. And what that means is that um, when you read it, um, even though God may not be mentioned, you see his hands at work in every page, in every chapter, in every part of the story. Um, kind of a, just a little bit of a tidbit. Um, there's a thing called the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Old Testament. It dates way back to like 300 BC, and, and uh, we have copies of that. No, I say we, I, I don't, but, um, but there's copies of that. And in the Septuagint, they actually added the name of God into a lot of those um, texts because of that. So it's been a controversy even before the New Testament time period. So it's just something that's been a problem for a long time, but I wouldn't say it's a problem. Think about it. God's name, or Esther's name is hidden, and God is seemingly hidden throughout the whole story. But if you are one who knows who God is, you will see him and you will see him and recognize him by his activity and by the faith of Esther and Mordecai, his people. Esther, by the way, going back to the story, is an orphan who's raised by her cousin Mordecai. And now when she's queen, she's hiding, right? Or she's hiding her identity because within the king's palace is a man named Haman. And y'all can get all this straight. And Haman is a sworn enemy of the Israelites. And this goes way back to Saul's time. He's what they call an Agagite, not that you need to know any of that. But the Agagites and the Israelites have been enemies for hundreds of years. And here, um, Haman wants to get his final revenge on all the Israelites. So he seeks to destroy every one of them. He's been put in place as the high commander. And, and the king has given him all the funds that he needs and given him all the freedom that he needs to destroy every last Jewish person in all the region. And he sets out to do so. And as he sets out to do so, Mordecai, Esther's cousin, comes to Esther and says, Esther, you have to do something about this. And Esther's saying, I don't know if I can do anything about this. Not a good relationship she has with her husband, by the way. She says, it's not my turn in the month. It's not my month of the year where I'm allowed to talk to him. <laughs> right? Think about that. Um, and she says, I couldn't even approach him. I'm not invited. He could kill me if I go and do that. Right? And, and, and what do you want me to do? Say, you have to say the Jewish people. If he asks why, I'd have to reveal who I am as a Jewish girl. And then that could mean the death of me. And Mordecai's response is one that is just absolutely fantastic. He says to her, look, you've been placed in the palace of the king as the queen for such a time as this. Meaning it's not accidental that you're there. God has put you there. All right? And again, he doesn't use the name God, but he mentions it. You can read it. It's right there. You've been placed there on purpose, with a purpose. It's not an accident that you're here. You can see God's hand in it. Nestor realizes it. And then Mordecai even says, look, God is faithful. If you don't do anything about it, something else will happen. But you and your family and my name and my family will most certainly perish. But God will save his people. Again, it doesn't use the name God, but it's all right there. You can read it. And it's a great text. It really is. And then Esther's response, she finally recognizes exactly what Mordecai is saying, and she knows that he's absolutely right, that it is her time, that, that this is why she is there. This is her purpose. Right? This is the big picture. And so she says, look, I'll do it. Um, and if I perish, then I perish. If I die, then I die. 
But this calling is more important. It's kind of interesting. She gives then some instruction to Mordecai and the people. And she says, here's what you are to do in the meantime. As I go and approach the king, you are to go and fast and pray. Think about that for a little bit. If I was in that situation, right? If I'm in the position of Esther, my advice to you would be, go find all the weaponry you can, go hunker down into a house, build a fortress, gather everybody, get your stronghold, find where your last stance is gonna be and get ready to fight like nothing else. But no, Esther and Mordecai realized the only way to fight this and to answer this is through God. So what's first step in the moment of crisis? If you were to ask me, I could tell you an answer. I'm a guy. I'm a fix-it person. Right? My kids come home and say, Dad, I had a bad day. Well, what happened? Well, this happened. I was like, okay, what are we going to do? Let's fix this problem. I got gotcha. you. Right? Who do I need to fight? Who do I need to write a letter to? Who do I need to chew out? What's going to happen? Right? And then they tell me what's going on, and I sit there, and I try to fix it, and, I, and it never works. I never actually fix anything, okay? Um, and, and then or my wife comes, and she'll, she'll share kind of how her day was, and I'm like, okay, um, are you talking to me, or am I supposed to do something right now? She goes, no, you're just supposed to listen. I was like, oh. I can try to do that. Okay, that's a lot. I'd rather you just tell me what to do right now. And it just doesn't work that way, right? Um, and because that's kind of how my brain works, and that's how probably most of our brains work. We, we're fix-it people. We're problem solvers. If there's a problem, there's got to be a solution. Um, never do we say the solution is completely outside of ourselves. That's when we call something helpless. And sometimes we need to recognize that we're more helpless and need to be more helpless than we really think we are. In fact, one of the greatest things, blessings that we could pray is to say, Lord, make me helpless. Then I could more easily trust in you. Here, Esther recognizes that she has a task to do, and in her advice to Mordecai is, what are you to do? Pray. Because God alone will save and deliver us. So that's what they go to do, and then Esther goes and approaches the queen or the king rather and she has to reveal who she is and as she reveals who she is what do you think happens how many of y'all like the movie rudy right man that came out when i was in high school i remember i'd tell myself that's right i'm going to be just like rudy i'm going to go play for the university of nebraska and it's going to be great they'll have to accept me because i've seen the movie and i'm motivated right um and, and i was just i thought that was my dream right that was going to happen Right, but I love the scene, and there's the amazing scene, right? Um, the Rudy moments, and and Rudy finally is able to go to uh, uh, the game uh, as a player because all his team forfeits their jersey to make sure he goes. And so as he goes, right, they go, "Are you ready for this?" And what's his response? "I've been ready for this my entire life." That's not how Esther was. <laughs> That makes for good movies, but that's not the reality when we find ourselves in tough situations, right? When we find ourselves in a position where God is calling us to something, we don't go, all right, God, I've been ready for this my whole life. Usually the response is, ah, somebody else, not me. I'm glad there's people in this world that will do something about that so I don't have to is really what we're saying. I, I, and and it, it goes with everything from somebody who needs help and you recognize that they need help and you're like, boy, I really hope they get their help. To everything, and I love it because everything from um, the Sunday school teacher, we go and ask for a Sunday school teacher and the common response that we hear is, is uh, um, ah, I don't think I'm quite prepared for that. And, and if I'm picking on you, I'm not trying to, but it's just, I thought this is, this is a good sermon illustration for Lutheran guilt, right? Because now I can go to them and I can say, oh, let me tell you about the story of Esther. She had to approach a king and he was probably going to kill her and all her people, um, right? But yet God said, for such a time as this, you were put in this place for this moment. Did she have all the answers? No. No, not at all. And we find ourselves in these moments so often, so often, that we don't even recognize them. We don't even see them. 
I think that's one of the hard parts of growing in faith, right? Is, is that we start to see the world through the lens of Christ and we start to see the world as God sees the world. And when we see someone, it's not just an interaction, but every interaction is an interaction that needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we can say, hey, is, even if it's as simple as a, for such a time as this that I can look at someone and say, I'm glad you're here. Or for such a time as this that we can pass by somebody and smile. Right? Or for such a time as this that we can have a moment that we can say it gets a little deeper and say, hey, I want to tell you about Jesus and his love and just how special it is because I think you need to hear that right now. And we answer that for such a time as this calls. I even think bigger than that and broader than that. And, and if you would, kind of let your mind wander a little bit because y'all are all here. We're all here. For such a time as this, we're gathered here at this moment. There's no accidents. God is still totally, utterly in control. He still watches over and cares for and still leads and his spirit guides and leads us. We believe that. But think about this. At some point in your life or in your history, I should say, somebody answered a for such a time as this call. You may not even know who it is. We had a baptism this morning. We have another one um, coming up in here in a little bit. But in those baptisms, I thought, well, there's mom and dad. They brought this child to the waters of baptism for such a time as this, right? That that child would be baptized and, and be raised to know the good news about Jesus. And thank God that mom and dad answered that call. But here's the thing that we don't often think about. Somebody answered that call before mom and dad did, right? And then somebody did before that parent did. And somebody did before that parent did. And we can't trace it all the way back, but if somebody could, maybe in heaven, we trace it all the way back at somebody started that for the first time. And maybe it's nine or ten generations back that you can go and say to someone, a complete stranger who said to your great, 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 great grandfather, the good news about Jesus and answer that such a time as this. Or maybe you're here and you're the first. And God bless you doubly. Because if you're here and you're the first, what does that mean? Somebody answered that call for you. And you get to start a whole wave of legacy. So eight generations from now, somebody will unknowingly thank God for you. For such a time as this, you were put in this world to have the relationships and the friendships and the interactions that you have in your life so that you know and the world around us knows the good news of Jesus. You want to change the world around you. I think we all do. We all recognize the for such a time as this in our lives. What a wonderful, cool thing. I mean, Esther saw it. We don't always see it. She was able to see it and recognize it and answer that call. And she knew it could go real bad. But she says, you know what? In the end, the goal is to follow Jesus, to follow his will, and to trust in him in all things. For such a time as this, we were created and brought into this place, wherever your context is in your life, to live it out to its fullest, always in the roots of the gospel. Now may his peace which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. This time we'll continue our service with our offer.
rise as we receive our offerings. We pray that you'd bless us, O Lord, so we may be a blessing to others. Amen. If you could join me as we all confess our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the very night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. I pray the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Thank you very much. You may be seated. We'll first serve those who are going to be assisting us.
to the cross you're calling you're calling you're calling us to the cross you're calling you're calling you're calling us to the cross you're calling you're calling you're calling us to the cross same love that set the captives free, the same love that opened eyes to see is calling us all by name. You are calling us all by name. The same God that spread the heavens wide, the same God that was crucified is calling us all by name. You are calling
rise. Now may this very body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you, keeping you in the one true faith to life everlasting. We depart in peace and the joy of our Lord. Thanks be to God. for this morning. We pray for our friends and family of hope. We pray for the Murley family, Dusty, Millie, and Miles. For Joe Lopez and Lindsey Murray, Cooper, and Presley. For the Nichols family, Chad and Chrissy, Luke, Ryan, Braden, and Hunter. If you would include those families in prayer. And I love it. Somebody asked me once, uh, why are you praying for me? There's nothing wrong. And I says, well, that's the whole point. We're just working through the alphabet. We pray for everyone. It's a good thing to do. And so, um, if you... Uh, aren't sure if your name will come up on that alphabet we, we have a list it's not required to be a member or anything like that for us to pray for you just let us know and we would love to add you to that as well um also if you would add in prayers we we have a um a prayer for for loss of a loved one uh vicky punchard was a, a teacher here for many many years she taught in the bumblebees classroom just on the other side of that wall um until she retired and um Man, I was just thinking about the, the number of lives that she's touched while working here. Um, the number of babies that she has held in her life um, is really quite remarkable. But, uh, um, uh, but she passed away uh, just earlier this week. And um, so our prayers are with her family and her friends, um, still near and dear uh, to a number of members of our church. And, and so we want to think of her and... and uh, um, remember her family and friends in prayer. So if you would join me as we go to our Lord. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise of all the opportunities we have to serve you, to proclaim your good name. And Lord, that you put us in those positions, but never alone, never without your power, your name, your promise, and your words that live in, in and through us. So help us, O oh Lord, to see the opportunities there are to uh, share your good name and to uh, act according to your will so the world may see you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord, as we lift up our friends and family here at Hope. We especially um, pray for this week, the Murley family, Dusty, Millie, and Miles, um, Joe Lopez, Lindsey Murray, Cooper, and Presley Murray. Lord, for the Nichols family, Chad and Chrissy, Luke, Ryan, um, Braden, and Hunter. Heavenly Father, that you'd be with these families, and Lord, that you would um, strengthen them, and Lord, that you would strengthen us as the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. For those who are loved ones who are sick and ill, we pray for your grace to be with them, to give them strength during their time of illness. And Heavenly Father, that your healing hand would be upon them. For Lauren and Danny, Ingrid, Deborah, Alan, Eloisa, Eldon, Linda, Barbara, Sharon, Justin, Scout, Alan, Donald, Carlene, Gladys, Wayne, Frida, Daniel, Jennifer, 
Marcella, Herman, Paul, Chris, and Josh. Heavenly Father, we lift them up to you and pray that you would watch over them this day and always. Lord, in your mercy. For the family and friends, O oh Lord, of Vicki Punchard, we pray that you'd bless them with comfort. And Heavenly Father, that you'd give them peace that's found in the promise that you give of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. And hear our prayer, O oh Lord, as we pray in your name and as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Water's raging at my feet I can feel The breath of those surrounding me I can hear The sound of nations rising up We will not be overtaken We will not be overcome I can walk Down this dark and painful road I can face Every fear of the unknown I can hear all God's children singing out We will not be overtaken We will not be overcome The same power that rose Jesus from the grave The same power that commands the dead to wake There's in us There's in us The same power that moves mountains when he speaks The same power that can calm the raging sea is in us, lives in us, he lives in us, lives in us. We have hope that his promises are true in his strength. There is nothing we can't do as we know. There are greater things in store. We will not be overtaken. We will not be overcome. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave. The same power that commands the dead to wake. Lives in us. Lives in us. The same power that moves mountains when he speaks. The same power that can calm a raging sea lives in us, lives in us. He lives in us, lives in us. Yeah. 